Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting late here in New York City. There you see the skyline, still some lights flickering in the in the buildings there. Lots of people staying up late and working probably. Of course, so uh, currently watching WCS America, the round of 32. I'm Axel Toss. I'm joined by Axlap. And uh, before we jump into this final match of the night, uh, youtube.com slash official MLG SC2. If you miss anything, all the VODs are there. All the VODs are already there from days one and two. Um, where, uh, of course, Group F and E. So if you missed any of those matches, definitely check them out. Do you have, like, a favorite game from any of those, if, if people are looking for one? I'm sorry I, to put you on the spot. No, 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 I do. Um, I kind of like Nesty versus Minigun and Akalon Waste, just because Nesty was, like, <laughs> one thing. He's like, all right, I'm just going to make nothing but drones. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nothing but bayonets. He had, like, 130 <laughs> drones. I'm not lying. Yeah. People are like, what? You're lying. I'm not lying. And then he's like, all right. It's muted time, baby. And he had like 70 mutas. <laughs> it was just... It was crazy. This is a one-track mind on the macro course to, to yeah. destruction. Another one I would suggest would be Minigun versus Apocalypse. That series oh, was really good. That, that was, was that was a great series. That was a great, great series. series. Uh, a lot on the line there. Yeah. Um, Very close. Yeah, definitely. Intense. Yeah, definitely check out that match. Um, and I feel like we should give Group F some love. STC versus Snoot. Those are some good match. That was a good match. That was a really good match for the, the winner's match of, of the, the first group. So, that being said, this is Group H. I think we have a graphic to show y'all. Um, telling y'all what's going on. Of course, the first match, uh, the standings, that is. We got Alicia, 2041. Of course, the one-dropped game was to Illusion. Illusion almost able to take out Illusion, uh, Alicia, excuse me, in the winner's match. And then we see Illusion at 1-1 one one, and Moonglid at 1-1. One one. Maker 0-2. Able to take a game off of Moonglade and scare Moonglade and Australians around the world, but mostly in Australia, uh, able to scare them a little bit. But now we have Illusion versus Moonglade. This is the decider. The winner of this best of three will go to the round of 16 of WCS America Premier League. The loser will go to the Challenger League. And I have a history fact lesson for you, Mr. Nick. Yes, sir. These guys have played recently. In fact, they played today. In fact, they were the first match of the day. And Illusion took the victory 2 1. It was a very close series, though. It really was. So uh, this one might be as uh, as close. And you know what's cool about that series is, I think both players learned a lot about each other from that series. That's a good point. Um, I mean, it, it, Illusion really, uh, he said even though the the Roach timings and the Roach play that Moonglade does, you know, he hadn't he hadn't really practiced for that. He had, and he's practiced a lot of Roach players. And he's right. like, this is something unique, uh, or at least relatively unique. It's not something you see too often that exact style. And, and he's kind of learning about that style. And yeah. then Moonglade, uh, he, I don't know if he's played someone who's just is crazy hellbent on dropping everywhere as Illusion. Yeah. I mean, he's like, he's like the the, Nor the, the United States version of Gimme Over. That is a great compliment. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this can go either way. You know, this is essentially a best of seven, kind of, kind of, yes. not really though. But you know, it's it's obviously we're, we're refreshed now. Best of three, they're very even, zero zero. Let's see what happens. Either one of these players can definitely move on. They both have the skill for sure, without a doubt. In the top left-hand location of Akalon Waste in game number one, we have the Red Terran player hailing from the United States of America. He's 17 years old. Representing Team Mouse Sports, he is Illusion. His opponent in the bottom right-hand location is your Blue Zerg player. Hailing from Australia, the Outback. Representing Team Envy, he is Moonglade. And if you haven't already, guys, be sure to, to tweet at these guys and show them your support. Of course, uh, Moonglade is at Moonglade AU. So it's Moonglade AU. AU, uh, I'm assuming, uh, meaning a, sh a shorthand version of Australia. That's a safe assumption. Okay. Just go, just a gonna, very safe assumption. Gonna put that out there. Of course, Illusion's Twitter is M O U Z Illusion. So Mouse Illusion. Mouse being uh, his team. So be sure to support these guys. Definitely use it. Um, so Illusion took the first match between uh, these two guys. Who's he gonna lost take the, the first second? map though? He did. And it was this exact map. He did. That was a little weird. We had a second SCV come out for uh, Illusion, but then he went back to mine. Might have been a little bit of a misclick, but... Yeah, it, it, sometimes you're, you're not sure if you need to pull an extra guy off to fight the drone or not. Yeah. Um, and you kind of like box two real quick, or... 
Um, lots of things can happen there. What adjustments do you think these guys are going to make based on uh, what they've seen from each other so far? Illusion uh, is going to be looking for that Roach Box. Yeah. 100%. Uh, he lost the first map to Moonglade because that caught him totally off guard. He had mm -hmm. no idea until all of a sudden 40 Speed Roaches were literally just at his doorstep and he had nothing. Um, so, I mean, he, he actually just got kind of crushed that first time to play uh, because of that. So it, that's not going to happen again. There, there's no way. We saw, you know, he was way more prepared for that the, in the third map when, when Moonglade tried it again in the first series, and he was able to... Yeah, I think he still actually fell behind against it, but he didn't die, and he was able to pull through that, that map in the end. And so he, he's not going to fall for that trickery. Um, we're not really trickery. Just, he's he's going to be more prepared for that build. Yeah. Moonglade, uh, he's probably... Uh, he's probably thinking about how can I stop his drop player. Yeah. I mean, if... We saw how destructive that was. Of course, in the first series they played against each other, Illusion loves his medevacs and will be all over the map if you don't uh, put a stop to them. You know, investing more in a static D can be a great way, but of course with Ignite Afterburners, it's never a given. Reaper here, scurrying around the main base of Moonglade, trying to get some drone kills. Going to just sneak behind the middle, a little bit of a, a committal there, but turning around at the last second, and he's going to get that regret alive. You know, one thing to note too is that's like, I feel, you know, um, I've said it, and some people say, like, oh, Jerks need more stack to even go in Road Charger against, you know, Bile. But it's very hard because uh, the, the more stack you, meant you make, the less Roach, Roach Hydras you have. The less Roach Hydras you have. So, wait, so, you so might the more just... static D, the less Roaches and Hydras? Yeah. So, you're thinking Moonglade will definitely go for the Roach Hydra in this game? Um, he, he might. He's, he's shown okay. that uh, this is a good map for and he's shown that he likes that style. So. Okay. Um, but if you do, I mean, that's something that everyone says, like, why don't Roach Hydra players get more attack defense to help against drops, right? right. Um, but it, it's not as simple as that, because uh, Roach Hydra, you really need to overwhelm. You need to have way superior numbers to beat that tier army, right? Yes. You just need to just totally overrun them. Good concave, good positioning, yeah. good reinforcements, good and creep spread, I think, is important. Exactly. All those things are so important, and it's it's not like you can magically get all that and get lost at defense. Yeah. It, it's, it's the balance is so hard to find. I agree. It? Like, in an ideal world, you never make static defense, right? Because it's it's never actually, con it's not contributing to your army. Yes. Of course, until the late game, when you have those extra resources that you can kind of, oh, okay, yeah, I can build some static defense now. But, um, yeah, no, I agree 100%. And honestly, I think it, there's a chance Moonglade might go for a Ling Baneling Muta style. The Muta's, of course, great in helping with uh, defending drops. So, we'll see. One thing, it's, it, it's interesting to note here. Um, is Illusion is actually going for a very, oh, very... Oh, Hellions! Gotta be careful. Almost a surround there. There are two Reapers going down. It's not the biggest deal. He, he got a good number of speedings. It's probably probably an even, yeah. even wash type situation. Uh, so, I don't think... Okay, Moonbid has identified this. This is a big scout. Seen early on, double reactor barracks, no starport. You can tell Terran has the potential to do some these really aggressive stim bio Hellion attacks. Yeah. And uh, the tricky thing with these is they hit before you could possibly get Baiting Speed. Mm -hmm. And without Baiting Speed, a stim bio and Hellions can actually just micro the crap out of Baiting. So yes. uh, Moonglade wants to do one of two things. He needs, either needs to spread creep yes. really aggressively because the, the bio Hellion doesn't really walk, walk too far into creep. And then, of course, the bio Hellion walks in, scans, kills some creeps, backs out, uh, and you, you don't die to attack. Um, another way is Roaches can sometimes do okay against it, but... I don't think he's going Roaches. Yeah, it's... They're not even that great either, because... Either two things will happen. You'll make enough Roaches to beat it, but then your economy won't be great. They'll see that and run away, and you don't actually win, because they just run away. And they take a third, yeah. they're upgrading double e engineering base. Or you don't have enough Roaches, and they just kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you make just the perfect amount, it can, it can be good, but that's that's such a hard game. I, I think the Bayonings and the focusing on creep spreading... To buy time. Look at all these Hellions, by the way. Speed. Oh, yeah. And then this is... This these is are going to get in there before Banelands come out. The wall needs to be true here from Moonglade. Even if he tries to engage with these links, that's not going to cut it. Even that's if he goes on speed. How many queens does he have? Does he have no queens? He doesn't have a spine crawler this game. There's no Last spine. Last game he that's had a so spine. Important. There's Remember? only three queens. Without a spine, how can he... Now, how can how far this? does Illusion... See, Illusion doesn't know the queen count, right? Yeah. He doesn't know there's no spine. So he he's could... not necessarily going to try to go into the natural. I feel he, I feel he could. Oh, he's gonna wait for the Marines. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to keep, keep the creep. Six keep banelings in production. There's the scan. Trying to get rid of some more creep, but here comes Moon. Really trying to make a decision here. Control's gonna be so important. Also, he has stim. Every time he stims, he's weakening his units. Here we go. Moonglade coming forward with the banelings and the lings. Marines not splitting too optimally. The Hellings gonna be sneaking away, and I think 
Moonglade not doing a terrible job so no, far. No, he got all the Marines, got yeah. a few Hellions. I, I think he's he's actually pretty happy yeah. with the way that went. And it's not like his his tech is too delayed. He's got the the two, uh, the one one on the way. And engineering base are only halfway done here for Illusion. That I think I think Moonglade is going to be okay with that. Definitely. Is Illusion going two engineer base and two armories? Yeah. Or, or what? Where are the armories? I just, I'm just thinking the production. Oh yeah, they're behind his. Yeah, that's. Maybe to keep his opponent guessing if the scout hunt. Okay, cancel that. Yeah, he's he when he's gonna go, he's gonna go into um you know probably Hellbat Bio is, is my guess, which is a cool style. We've seen some of the top Korean players do that. Um, saying you know the widow mines, some of these Zergs can micro against them. Let's just try Hellbat Bio, uh, and that that's actually a really really awesome style. I mean, uh, I'm saying that because why would he get the armory now if he wasn't gonna make Hellbats? Yeah. It's not like he needs two two. He's just turning one one. I'm a little bit intrigued why he hasn't put down a Spire yet, or um, or any sort of additional tech. Like, the only layer tech he's getting is the Bailing Speed. He was watching his new play. There's the 2-2. Two -two. And, and yeah, still no advancement into any additional tech, so just mass Ling Bailing at this point. A pretty committed thing. You know what? And on Akalon Wastes, there's a Spire. But yeah, go on. It is. Uh, mass Ling Bailing is actually not that good against Hellbats. Um, a, a couple important things to note is Hellbats are insanely good against Beatings. For a Bane to be cost efficient versus Hellbats, it has to hit three Hellbats. So if the Terran just splits Hellbats in groups of two, it's very difficult because Speedings can't really ov overwhelm them. Those, I mean, you'll lose so many Speedings trying to get through them. And Bane's aren't that great against them either. Uh, but Mutilus are really good because Mutilus force your opponent to keep units together so they don't get picked off. And as soon as they put the units together, then the Bane's get those big hits they really need to get. Oh, Hellions might get surrounded. Three or four Hellions caught off guard there. A little bit of a mistake there from Illusion. Not watching his army. Trying to secure this third. Great move from uh, from Moonglade here. Had him having an Overlord. Hoop and creep there. You know, you know what's really interesting? What's interesting? Illusion, similar to we saw uh, yesterday um, Phoenix get, he's getting that transform mode for the, the Hellions. Is he? Yeah. Which is an upgrade It's you almost never see, uh, it, it's very rare to see players use this upgrade because it's kind of expensive. Oh, I thought that was a Hellbat in production. It took a very long time to produce. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and in a second factory. Okay. Um, so, but the Dotcon's actually exactly the same. It's oh just, my gosh. Okay, so uh, we might see a big Hellbat drop, but 11 meters in production. If this drop tries to happen right when the meters pop out, that might be the worst case scenario. Is he going to try to drop them on the speedings? Oh, that, that I, I assume he's going to peel them away, but I think he might be right. His I, opponent might think they're empty right now. Does oh, it could be a trap! When his minions run okay, in, no, he's gonna lower that. Oh, that would have been so funny. Moonglade thinks it's like just There's Marines. no Hellbats, yeah. But look at this concave that, that Moonglade is setting up. He's gonna go for it very soon. Speed is done. He's waiting for 2 2. That's the only reason he's waiting right now. 24 more leagues in production. Mutas are in the air. Illusion has to be careful. He has to split absolutely perfectly. There is a counterattack. No, no, no. There's an Overlord heading into the third base. Just getting some scouting done. The bait is coming for 2 2. Moments away from finishing, but this is already dealt with, and he hasn't even attacked yet. It is. Uh, Illusion's got to get out of here. He's got to lift up. Use the that effort. It's run, Illusion! Save your Marines! Run. Or the... Yeah, yeah. Here we go. There He's going to get away. Okay. Um, that Moonglade handled that beautifully. He did. It was very beautiful. But, I mean, he's only by 20 food. If Illusion can hold this attack... Got to be careful. Oh, is. that medevac almost died. There's not enough Bainings right... Oh, as I said, there's more Bainings being morphed just a little bit further back there. Uh, Illusion's gonna have to show really great splits. All right. Oh, so Bainlings trying to head to that that third base, and I don't know what saves that. The Ling's just gonna go to town on this SCP's Marines gonna try to help save, splitting up preemptively. Great move there, but the the upgrades are huge. Uh, two two for Moonlight to the one one right now of Illusion. Thor is out. That's gonna help with the Munos, but does Illusion have enough? For the fourth, the third base getting ravaged. The SCP's all dying in that location. Workers killed is 22 here for Moonglade, 65 to 41 in the Harvesters, and already mission accomplished here from Moonglade. And at this point, it's just let's get some trades. And any trades are good. He trade might have enough to win right now. They're taking out the Metabacks. Those are units you do not want to have to rebuild those. I mean, uh, Moonglade just constantly streaming units at 30. Wow. It's going to take so long to reestablish here. Uh, the upgrades are so huge here. Uh, Mouse Illusion working on 2 2. Yeah. More and more Bane's being morphed in here. And, and 
Moongate already has an infestation pit built. As soon as he thinks that maybe Moongate or Illusion might stabilize, he just backs up and, and attacks and, and consolidates his advantage. But until then, the Banelings exploding into the supply depots at the front door. The Muta's coming in as well. Widowmine's trying to get broken. That might be the saving grace here, but there is an Overseer overhead. Able to spot those and take him down. Illusion down to 68 supply to the 127 of Moonglade. But uh, I don't know if Muta's can win this game right now. Might have to wait for some links. Well, they might be able to win this game. <laughs> they thought they could. Yeah. Uh, flying away, realizing away that now. maybe maybe it's not going to work. Um, so now he's going to go hive. He's like, okay, okay. We'll, we'll go hive. And he has a, a fourth base behind this. So it's not like he's, you know, all in by any means. No, um, he's, he's 70 harvesters. He, he, what he wants to do is he wants to slowly start, you know, denying the third and then also eventually transition to ultra. So he's going to slowly build up that bankroll of resources to make that transition later on. Uh, it's something that's pretty hard to knock a Terran out um, with that Ultramus. The Orbital Command at the third, that that uh, might have been the way back to the game somehow. But with that gone, the Widow Mines getting taken out. Yeah. There's the GG from Illusion, and Moonglade takes game number one. In, um, it, it also, I think it all started with that, that timing push there from Illusion. That just, it just didn't work. It, the, the Howling Stim push just totally fell yeah. flat. Uh, it just, he actually didn't even get in and kill a single drone. He didn't kill a single Evo. A lot of times, you know, the Zerg has to back up to more more bay needs, and yeah. that's where he killed the, the Evos at the walls, slow their upgrades. Uh, because he sacrificed a big part of his upgrade time. His upgrades were so far behind because he went for that push. Uh, and if he can't get damage done with that, it's, you just. Behind yeah, I mean, because he, he was delaying his upgrades. He, he was. Yeah. And, you know, Moonglade was able to really focus on that. And kudos to Moonglade there, staying confident enough to keep going with his upgrades, not canceling anything, you know, sticking with the game plan, even though the pressure was coming. And he had just enough units to hold it off. And again, he didn't lose any economy. And when you're only, when you're trading Lings for, you know, all those Marines and a little bit of Hellions at that point in the game, you're going to be happy as a Zerg player. Because all your important stuff is still happening behind the scenes. Your Lings are out there to, to help defend those locations. And, and that's what they did. They did their job. They really did. Yeah. Really did. So Moonglade taking game one over Illusion, guys. When we come back, it's going to be game two. Um, Moonglade is one win away from advance to the round of 16 of WCS America Season 1. Illusion must win two in a row. Guys, stay tuned for game two between Moonglade and Illusion.